Look, I think we take for granted how accessible it is to play retro games on the fly. I mean, hell, I don't think people in 1992 thought this could go on something like this. And that's what makes these emulators so special. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So I think it's about time we pay tribute to them. So today, we're going to take a look at some retro game emulators that allow you to play games on your phone. Let's check it out. The first emulator we'll be looking at is called Retro 64 Games. Despite the namesake, this emulator not only plays N64 games, but it also plays Super Nintendo, NES, and Game Boy Advance. Each one of the cartridges has a game with its respective box art, except for the NES games for some reason. Along with a link that takes you directly to the Google Play Store. So you better get used to seeing Metal Slug being advertised all over the menus. I can't do much about that. But let's see how it runs games, starting with Super Nintendo. To begin with, the large selection of games is actually really good. You got all the classics, Mario World, Mario Kart, Mario All-Stars, Dofus Island, Donkey Kong Country, Link to the Past, and pretty much all the highly rated games everyone knows. And fortunately, most of the games I played through ran smoothly without any issues. There might be a minor visual glitch here and there, but nothing too major. So yeah, the emulation works pretty well, but the way you play these games... Well, that's a different story. All the buttons are laid out so that you can't hit two buttons at the same time with your thumb. Like imagine playing with a controller, but you would need a claw hand it the whole time. Don't get me wrong, it works, but it's a lot more to get used to. And of course, with this being unofficial, there are a few oddball games thrown in. And one of them has to be the stupidest inclusion in this entire app. What am I talking about? Yep, they put Mario Paint, the one game that doesn't work with a normal controller. For ones who don't know, the only way to start Mario Paint was to click on Mario with the Super Nintendo mouse. And seeing that you can't use the mouse in the game, you're not getting past the title screen. They also decided to put Mario's Time Machine for some reason. Well, I guess it could have been a lot worse. And of course, this game's Magnum Opus. Sonic the Hedgehog on Super Nintendo. Now we just gotta find Mario on Genesis and my life is complete. What are we getting ourselves into? Game Boy Advance doesn't disappoint in its line of games either. We got the Mario Advance Quadrilogy, the Sonic Advance Trilogy, Mario Kart Super Saints game, and even WarioWare. Also, both ports of Earthworm Jim. Just be thankful they forgot about this. And, I'm not kidding, a Game Boy Advance Yu-Gi-Oh cartridge. Seriously. I want you to keep my Millennium Puzzle Joy belongs to you now. Hopefully that puzzle will free Joey from Merrick's mind control before it's too late. Cause that anchor's gonna fall into the ocean in about 20 minutes, taking me and Joey with it. And I know our bond is control. I always wonder what this late. kind of technology would look like if it was released today. You know, it probably looks something like this. And yes, it's pretty standard, but there are a few highlights. Ones that stick out the most, the DuckTales games, Yoshi, the original Bomberman, and of course, the game everyone knows, Super Mario 14. Man, who are the type of people who make these? Oh yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Oh, okay, yeah. And now onto the main event, the Nintendo 64. The N64 game collection is what you expect: Mario 64, Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, and Banjo Kazooie. But they also have the original Paper Mario, Rayman 2, and even Cockroach Bad Fur Day and Diddy Kong Racing. It's refreshing to see these games on something like this. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about. You know what, never mind. Each console generation has a different layout for its controls, but these games were not made with a touchscreen in mind, so it might be a little hard to adapt. 
to this new control scheme. I already stated how you can't hit two buttons with one thumb, so moves might be very difficult to pull off, like lawn jumping in Mario 64. Once again, just something to get used to. So that's pretty much it for the Retro 64. It's a great way to go back to these classic games on your smartphone, even though the controls can get a little wonky at times. Now the next two apps on here use everyone's favorite thing in the world, downloadable ROMs. God help me. All the downloaded ROMs we're going to play are from this website called ROMsGames.net, which has an extensive library of console generations to choose from. So you can thank these people for the emulated experiences we're about to witness. And these two emulators both share one thing in common. Sega! Yes, these two emulators both play Sega Genesis games. With our first one being Gen Plus Droid. Yes, that's how it's actually spelled. When you open the app, it takes you to this menu to select the ROM of your choice. There's a fast forward button that helps make games go faster, which is very useful for getting all the emeralds in this particular game. And they use the six button layout for all the games. One problem is that there's no visual indication that you're hitting the D-pad or moving the buttons, so it might be hard to tell if you're hitting the right button or not. This might just be a problem for me, really, but it is, again, something to be aware of. There's also a rewind button, which is supposed to help with messing up in a particular game, but I think it's more useful for this. There's also save states and a history option to recover any ROMs without searching the universe just to play a certain game. So overall, I would say this is a nice way to play Genesis games on your smartphone. They also have other ones for NES and SNES, but it's pretty much the same app, only with different games and controller layouts. So yes, I would recommend this one. The second one... Well... So for this emulator, they decided that it would be a good idea to stretch out the games to fill the screen space. Great. There also happens to be a permanent add on top which takes up even more room. But that's okay, if you don't want the screen to be stretched out to another dimension, you can always play it vertically. I hate this. The D-pad is weirdly stiff and the A, B, and C buttons are all pushed to one side. So, you can pretty much say goodbye to any precise actions. Trust me, they're not gonna work. At all. So yeah, EMUMD probably isn't your greatest choice when making these Genesis games portable. And now we finally see to it with Sega Forever. While they aren't technically emulators, they are emulated versions of Sega games, so I'm going to count them. Everyone is familiar with the remakes of Sonic 1, 2, and CD, all made by Christian Whitehead, which are now seen as the best versions to play any of these games. But the thing is, that this isn't an inherently new idea from Sega. According to the official website, Sega Forever basically takes classic Sega games and barfs them up on the App Store. For free. And the game's overall presentation is... Disappointing, to say the least. Their presentation is very generic for being official, and the controls are very tuned up. And also, I want to clarify that these are not remakes, they are just the same games put on a phone. And seeing that these games were not made with a phone in mind, the controls can get a little jarring. There's also a heavy dose of games to choose from, but they all just feel like they're doing the bare minimum of effort required. They're not terrible, but you definitely have better options. So, those are just some emulators that allow you to play classic games on your phone. Some more better than others, but if you just want to relive these classic games or have an easier way of obtaining them, then they're okay for throwing that in there are, of course, better options to play these titles like game compilations, the various mini consoles that have been produced, and even a site on your PC that has almost every game you'd want to play for free. With an extensive library of games and custom controller mapping, I say it's perfect if you want to get into retro gaming. I'll leave a link in the description if you're curious. 
but at the end of the day, there will always be tons of ways to play these awesome games for years to come. Hey guys, welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, this channel is really, like, really small right now, but I want to know, what do y'all want to see from this channel? Like, like, what things do you want me to cover? Or what things do you want me to talk about? Just let me know in the comments what you want me to talk about. I know these past few months have been crazy. I mean, I haven't uploaded in so long, but uh, I'm going to try to upload more frequently. I'll do my best. But yeah, with all that being said, thanks for watching. And remember, keep drawing and drawing, and you'll get there. Oh yeah, and Happy New Year.